Oh man, oh man, I'm gonna melt. Whew. Well, welcome back everyone to Washita Valley. As you can see, it is pouring. It's a Saturday, right after lunch. You just left home. I got paid today, and um, we didn't do much this morning at the co-op because it pretty much has done this the whole morning. I think it is about to let up, and the sun's gonna come out, and hopefully it'll be a nice afternoon. But anyways, here I am, uh, stopped off the mini mart. I'm in flatbed, and as you can see, there is something in the back. So we're going to meet somebody new today, and we're going to do some wheeling and dealing. Stick around. All right, well, welcome back, everybody. So we're south of Burksville now. Uh, I stopped off at the bank and got some cash and got a little bit of money from Rodney for the brush hogging that we did the other day. So the man that we're going to meet today, his name is Rusty. His name is Rusty Jenkins. Um, I don't know that his name is actually Rusty. That's just what everybody's calling, what everybody calls him. Uh, Rusty is a, he's a retired guy. He worked in a factory, I believe, uh, for most of his life. But he's retired now, and what he does in retirement, just kind of for fun and to make a little money, is he travels around to different auctions and to different places, and he buys equipment to basically try to flip it and make a buck. And now, if you'll remember from a few videos ago, uh, I bought a new hay rake from somebody. And that somebody was, was Rusty. And so we're here today to pick up another piece of equipment, which I am purchasing from Rusty. And we'll probably take a look around and see what else he's got. And um, so, yeah, if you hadn't figured it out already it has something to do with my uh, with my sickle mower that I've got here on the back as you might guess what we're picking up is a new hay cutter so let's go see if we can find Rusty hello Rusty Hello there. Right on time, I see. Did you bring cash? Huh. Yep, got it right here. Word the whole way from town that I might get robbed. Oh, I bet you did. Well, it's not quite ready. I got one tire changed, and I gotta do the second, and it'll be ready. Okay. No, no problem. Mind if I have a look around? Sure. Go right ahead. Hey, I've been watching that YouTube blog of yours. Pretty entertaining. Wish I'd been the one to find that old 3020. Huh. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Alright, everybody. Let's go take a look at what Rusty's got. Sorry if I uh, sorry if I sniffed during the video. I'm afraid I'm coming down with a bit of a cold. So, as I was saying, Rusty he just um, he just kind of travels around, looks for different deals. Um, if you didn't know, well, you know, in different parts of the country, uh, farm equipment is maybe worth more or less money than it is in other parts of the country. So, a lot of what Rusty does is go out of state and he buys equipment or vehicles or whatever that may be going for, um, you know, a, a cheaper, there may not be much demand for it in that particular region. And he brings it back to Oklahoma to where he might be able to sell it for a higher price or a premium. <laughs> now... 
Rusty doesn't do a lot of mechanical work on it. I mean, he does some simple, some simple mechanical work. Um, you know, just sort of like he's, like you might heard him say, you know, changing tires, things like that. Um, but he he tries to buy pretty, he tries to buy equipment that's in pretty good shape. Um, for the most part, uh, especially motorized equipment, and he just kind of tries to just sort of make a quick resell on it. So it looks like he's got some kind of some kind of pickup here. Um, looks like it's in okay shape. Probably probably high mileage. That's one thing about a lot of Rusty's equipment. It's it's generally pretty high houred and generally pretty um, pretty high mileage. Pretty good looking old wheat truck here. Um, looks like maybe he's painted it. Or had somebody paint it. This is a pretty... It's a pretty classic wheat truck for this area. And, um... You know, the, the 1970s Fords, the 1970s Chevrolets. Um, this might be early 80s, I'm not real sure. But, um... This is... When I was growing up, um... I was a real small kid, uh... A lot of the farmers around here still use wheat trucks like this. Now, um, as the fields got bigger, the combines got bigger, and the grain carts got bigger, uh, you know, first they went to, you know, like big tandem wheat trucks, and now, of course, most everybody uses a semi, but it's not too uncommon to see a wheat truck like this sitting around on somebody's farm just to use for, you know, odds and ends, um, like for the screenings when they clean uh, their seed wheat or or their, uh, you know, whatever. So, huh. pretty good, um, pretty good looking little truck there. And then, another thing that you see at Rusty's um, fairly often is um, something like this. Now, this is, I have no idea. I've never even heard of this brand of tractor, Armatrack. Uh, I have no idea where it comes from. I'm guessing somewhere... I'm guessing somewhere probably in Europe or somewhere in um, like Asia, like maybe like coming from South Korea or um, maybe um, like Singapore or someplace maybe. I don't know. Could be could be Japanese maybe, but. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of the the normal stuff you'd see sitting out here on his on his lot, so to speak. That that's where Rusty lives, right over in the house. Um, but yeah, I just um, you know I I bought the hay rake from Rusty, and while I had to do a lot of work on the hay rake, it was exactly as he said it was. Um, you know, he told me what needed fixed and what didn't need fixed, and even though I spent quite a bit of money getting a hay rake ready to go and fixing it up, I, um, I still, I still feel like he did me right. And so when it came time to start looking for a bigger hay mower, um, I asked him what he had or what he might be able to find for me. Uh, he already knew that I had this, that I had this sickle mower and he's kind of interested in it. A lot of a lot of little homestead type farmers that we have around nowadays are um, Rusty does a lot of business with those with those folks who are looking for you know less less high tech um, smaller uh, type equipment. Um, he and they're often they're on a pretty tight budget. Rusty has a a big market for those kind of folks, so he feels like he can probably. Um, get this sickle mower sold pretty quickly yep. let's go around and um, and look at what he's got in the back here's his tractor it's an old Fent who knows how many thousands of hours are on it um, seems to be a pretty good old tractor though he likes it not real common around here this is his rig that he goes to um, he kind of takes it to the auctions goes to pick up equipment you know whatever so on and so forth I guess maybe this was his older rig that he used to use um, before he got the newer one. It's 
a pretty darn cool old truck, but very much in disrepair. Um, I don't know. Pretty neat, though. It's definitely missing some, uh, missing some tires, missing some parts. And so this back here, this is just kind of his boneyard maybe i don't i don't know that i'd call it exactly the boneyard but um because a lot of the stuff in here is still probably in usable condition it's just that um you know a lot of it's odd it's from odd manufacturers like this tractor here i'd i'd venture to say that this is another like maybe eastern european former soviet block type tractor um Almost reminds me of a of a Belarus or a Belarus or, or however you say that. We got an old combine that um, looks similar. Looks I don't know either European or or um, or Eastern Eastern European. Um, he's got some new stuff um, back here. I, um, let's just go around and we'll kind of look at it all. Now, some of this stuff has been here for quite a while, if you can't tell. I mean, he's got, um, he's got a little cultivator here, a little three-point cultivator. You know, I don't know, it's like, I don't know, five, six foot probably. Yeah, probably six foot, something like that. Got an old three, no, it's four. Got an old four-bottom plow that's just really old and, you know, outdated. You know, not, not very often anymore do you see these plows that are bolted together. You know, most most everything anymore is welded. This reminds me of something that you might have seen back in the day being pulled behind a, a two-cylinder John Deere or an old Farmall M or Super M or something like that. Actually, a four-bottom is probably pretty good size for, for most of those tractors from back in the day. It does have a three-point hitch, though, so... Um, it's not too old. This brush hog's new. Looks like it, um, looks like maybe some kind of off-brand manufacturer. Um, I think he kind of needs to use it around here a little bit. Got an old wheat drill here, or some kind of drill. And again, you know, it's, it's not something, it's not really something normal. I have no idea who the manufacturer is or where it came from. Um, but this is just this is typical of of the stuff that you see here that Rusty finds that you know it's not really marketable to any of the farmers around here because it's you know who who knows where it came from but a lot of the smaller you know like I said homestead type farmers they eat this stuff up because it's cheap and just because it's you know not name brand doesn't mean it doesn't work you know perfectly fine and since it's not name brand, since it's not deer, since it's not case, whatever, um, typically it's they can get it for a lot cheaper than than one of those major brands. There's some kind of other little drill. This one has been here for a while. Um, this one I know for sure was here when I came to when I came to pick up my hay rake because I remember um, I specifically remember this thing um let's see here ah this hay rake this hay rake was here also whenever i came to look at the hay rake that i finally bought and if you don't remember my hay rake that i that i bought from rusty it's the v it's the v rake you know i traded the i traded the single-sided wheel rake uh, plus some money plus some other older implements to too rusty for the hay rake that I got and this one was here and I was actually really interested in this one however he's just got the one rake and for me to want something like this and be able to use something like this I would want the the other rake that goes along with it so I would want to rake you know I'd want to rake the hay I wouldn't I wouldn't I'd want to catch one one run wind row with this rake and then I want to have the opposite twin rake over here to catch the other one row, so I could rake two together. Um, when I was looking for a hay rake, I was I was looking for a rake that um, would speed up my operation, 
and the single sided rake here um, with it just with it just being a single sided rake it it wouldn't really do me much good it it really wouldn't really wouldn't have sped up my operation uh, much this is something that's new that I could possibly inter be interested in the future uh, it's a you know obviously it's a disc and it's about the right size that I think I would want but I don't really know that I would want a three-point disc I think I'd rather have a trailed disc you know that has a regular tongue on it and and it has wheels to lift it up out of the ground um, I don't know a three-point rake I mean a three-point disc might actually be I could see situations where it would be handy it would definitely load on my trailer a lot easier than a trailed disc would uh, would load looks like we got an older uh, John Deere chisel here um, definitely looks old judging by the way the frame is put together and um, in the wings and all doesn't look like it's been sitting here very long though because the points are are shined up it looks like somebody's been using this uh, not too long ago hydraulic hoses don't look too bad you know if somebody if somebody just needed a cheap chisel to drag around over a few acres you know just to kind of break something up or whatever you know this is this might be a good this might be a good option for them and that's and that's just kind of sort of the stuff that that rusty um rusty has he just kind of he tries to look look for value where um, most people don't see it and then you know this is typical again you know random combine header and trailer um, sitting back here now, no yellow combine in sight um, I don't even think he's got a yellow combine he's got some kind of combine in the barn I think that's a combine let me go right here yeah it's got some kind of old that thing actually looks like it's in pretty good shape but there again I don't that's not really a it's not really a combine that I recognize from being around here it doesn't really look familiar at all he's got something over there too it's some kind of it's like some kind of swather maybe I don't know what that is. It looks kind of like a swather, but that head is definitely not a swather. Huh. But yeah, so anyways, this is just, uh, this is, this is kind of Rusty's place, and, you know, never, there's, there's no telling what he's going to have at any one time. Uh, he just goes around to the auctions, buys what interests him, buys what he thinks he might be able to turn around and sell. And most of this stuff back here, it will probably, you know, eventually, I and mean, I don't know about this combine, this other tractor over here, and probably not that truck, but um, a lot of the stuff is going to eventually end up out front um, on his lot to be sold because when he's not working on something specifically for somebody uh, or trying to find something specific for somebody, he's fixing up this old equipment to put out front and sell. So this is just kind of his back lot that he, that he hasn't gotten to yet. And... Um, so we came, we came the other day, Dad and I did, to look at what he had because he had the, he found for me the, the swather that I'm buying, uh, that's, it's in his shop. Uh, he found that one for me and, uh, cause he knew I was on the lookout for something bigger, something different. And so he went to an auction and he found it for me and he said, you know, I, I bought it come and look at it and if you decide you don't want it he said I'm sure I can I can resell it so there'll, there'll be no hard feelings but he also told me that he had this unit back here and um, if you don't know what this is this is a three-point disc mower so your your tractor hooks up here to the three-point it's got a PTO and it's got a gearbox and um, it's got a disc mower um, cutter bar under the uh, under the apron uh, here and I, I really strongly considered this thing because one of the nice things about disc mowers is that 
you can mow pretty fast uh, with them, generally. Generally speaking, you can mow pretty fast with them because, um, for one thing, there's no conditioner. So it's just like, it's like a, it's like a high-tech, it's like a high-tech, um, state-of-the-art, we'll say, version of the sickle bar, the sickle bar mower that I have right now. Um, it's just the newer, the newer style. You can mow faster with it. And in a lot of cases, you can mow as fast as you can stand to drive your tractor. So if you can stand to drive your tractor 10 miles an hour over the field, you can mow at 10 miles an hour. Now, the downside to this is, for one, it's not very wide. Um, it's, it's Honestly, it's probably just a hair bit wider than the sickle mower that I have right now that I'm getting away from. And then the other downside is that there's no conditioner in this, and so there's no there's no crimper, so it doesn't help with drying time at all. It, it's basically going to have you know similar the the hay that I would cut with this is going to have a similar drying time that the that the sickle bar mower that I'm using now would have, and that's you know if this thing had been quite a bit bigger. Um, you know, another another foot or two. I may have considered this um, a little a little more, but because of the size that it is now, um, I just really didn't. I really didn't consider it too much. Um, if I was still, if my primary tractor was still the thirty twenty, this would have been probably just about the right size for that. But since I have the Fent now. And, uh, not the Fent, because I have the Fiat now. I, it has quite a bit more horsepower than the 3020. And I'm able to run a bigger, uh, bigger mower. So, I briefly considered this thing, but in the end, I, after I looked at it and saw what size it was, I decided to go with what, uh, what I'm ending up gonna, gonna be purchasing. Let's go see, now that you've kind of seen this place and, and kind of looked around a little bit, I don't think there's anything here that I really need. Um, I might keep my, keep my mind on that disc, maybe for, for the future, but um, I don't need a combine header. That chisel's way too big for my tractor. Um, again, decided against that New Holland um, back several weeks ago. So, don't need it. Uh, don't need a drill at this time. Um, Steve is going to lend me his drill to plant my oats and alfalfa with. So, I don't actually need to go buy a drill. Um, I guess the drill that he uses for his alfalfa is like his secret weapon. So, that will be coming up in a future video. And it will be pretty interesting to, um, to see how that works. This truck would be pretty neat to have, but it looks like a ton of work. And if Rusty, you know, parked it in the weeds because it was broke down and unusable, then who knows how much, you know, work it would actually need to get going again. So I don't think I need a truck today. So let's go see what, um, let's go see what Rusty's got to say. I'm sure he's probably about done by now. You're all set. Did you find anything else you need? No, not this time. I didn't bring enough cash anyway. Oh, well. There's always next time. Let me move this stuff out of the way and we'll get you hooked up. Alright, everybody. Well, here it is. It's a New Holland 116 Haybine. It's a hydra swing, what's called a hydra swing uh, in slang terms, because the tongue will swing from one side of the machine to the other side of the machine um, for making your turns on your headlands. It makes it a whole lot easier um, to run, you know, back and forth from pass to pass. It is a, an older style sickle bar cutter, uh, so it's the the cutting mechanism is very similar to the sickle bar that I I traded um, Rusty for. It's got a reel, obviously, to help bring the hay in, and so you're able to move 
through the field a little quicker. And one nice thing about this machine is it's got a conditioner. So those two rubber, uh, those two rubber rollers there, that's what's known as a conditioner. And as the hay is cut, and right before it's spit out the back in the windrow, it's crimped by those two rubber rollers, and that helps to expedite the drying and the curing of the hay. So hopefully my turnaround time on my um, my cut to bale uh, should be a little quicker with this machine. Now, an another good thing about this machine is that it is uh, 16 feet wide. And so it is much, much wider than my little old sickle mower. And I should be able to move through the grass and move through the fields quite a bit quicker as well. So I'm really looking forward to it. It seems like for as old of a machine it is, and it was made, uh, if I remember correctly, like mid to late 80s and maybe even into the early, early 90s. I'll have to go back and double check that for sure, but um, seems like that's about right. And now the way this thing works, since it's a hydro swing, it actually has, it's got a PTO connection up here in the front, and this little thing you see right here, this is a hydraulic pump. So the PTO runs a hydraulic pump on the unit, and the reel and the cutter mechanism and all that is run by uh, hydraulics. I checked the wheel bearings while I was changing the tires. They were a bit loose, so I cleaned them up and repacked them while I was at it. I'd hate to see you get stranded on the way home. The hub on the passenger side may need a seal before long. Thanks, Rusty. I'll keep an eye on it. Make sure you let me know how you get along once you start cutting with it. I always like to know how my customers get along with what I sell them. You got it, Rusty. Hey, thanks again, and enjoy that new fifth wheel. Thank you, uh, Custler. Take care now. All right, so as you, as you heard um, Rusty say, he put a couple of new tires on this thing. That's one of the things that uh, that I noticed whenever Dad and I came to look at it is the tires were pretty nasty, pretty dry rotty. And so one of the, one of the things in our in our agreement was that he put on two new tires and um, as you heard him say, he repacked the well the wheel bearings while he was in there. And um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited about this thing. Uh, whenever, whenever Dad and I came and looked at it uh, the first time, he hooked it up to his tractor, and um, he, you know, he ran it for several minutes uh, under full speed, and uh, manipulated all the hydraulic cylinders. You know, did did everything that that he could do to demonstrate its its um, you know quality without actually going and cutting any hay because he didn't at the time this this grass here was a lot shorter and there was just nothing to cut around here but um he did run it for several minutes at full speed um dad and i looked everything over close you know ran it without the guards on it obviously staying back um uh, make sure we didn't get injured or anything uh one of the things we did is we brought an infrared heat gun along with us so that we could, um, you know, shoot all the bearings with the infrared heat gun to make sure it didn't look like anything was getting overly hot. Um, there's some gearboxes on here that we um, that we took the temperatures of to make sure that you know nothing was getting hot, and um, and everything just checked out really, really well. I mean, it seems like for as old as it is, it seems like maybe it hasn't had just a tremendous amount of use. I think that at least part of the time it spent its it spent its life in a barn or in a shed or something. I mean, it is missing a little bit of paint here and there, and it's kind of starting to fade a little bit. But overall, it, it seems to be, you know, a, a pretty good machine, I think. Um, it seems to run pretty smooth. 
for as old as it is, you know, at high speed. So I'm looking forward to cutting with it. Uh, I don't think we're going to get any cutting done today. Um, I don't even think we're probably going to even be able to take it home and try it anywhere because of how much rain we got, uh, we really got. It wasn't flash flood or anything this morning, but it started raining about, uh, I don't know, probably 3 or 4 o'clock this morning. And, I mean, it didn't stop until I was halfway into town at, like, 1.30 this afternoon. I mean, it just it absolutely poured all morning long. So, everything's pretty waterlogged. Everything is pretty, um, everything's pretty soaked. All the plants are getting a good drink. The corn is loving it because it's hot. The sun came out and it's it's really warmed up and it's hot now. So the corn's getting a good drink, um, the beans are getting a good drink, and it won't be long before that stuff's um, going to be ready to cut. Also, unfortunately, it's not going to be long before it's time for me to head back to school, and um, I'll kind of have to do I'll kind of have to do the hay season at the end of the year this year um, on the weekends and kind of while I can, but. Um, so guys, I think that's going to do it for this uh, for this episode. Um, I've got to try to get this thing home. I'm going to back road it. I'm going to back road it because it's so wide. Um, take my time. Go nice and slow. It'll probably take me. Well, I don't know. It's probably going to take me an hour to get home, anyways. Um, try not to smoke anybody's mailboxes on the way. But guys, uh, if you enjoy the video. Uh, Please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. Um, and also, down in the comments, this is this is episode number 31. And I would really be interested to know, for those of you who have been following along and have seen several of my videos, please tell me um, what has been your favorite episode and... Tell me why. What type of videos do you like? What kind of machinery do you like to see? And um, I'm just kind of I'm just kind of curious because some uh, sometimes the the analytics and statistics that I get from YouTube are not um, they they seem strange. So I'd really like to hear from some of you who are long-time viewers and subscribers, or those of you who are new to the channel and got drawn in by some particular episode. What episode was that, and why were you drawn in? So guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.